everybody. How y'all doing? Look at there. There's another high flying Chevy. And do you see what I see? Yes, we do. Unfortunately, that's the 80 over, but the 80 over I don't think is going to die with me. Uh, as you see how high it is in the air, right there, it's it five, six foot off the ground. I was trying to get the oil pan off last night. Well, I had it there. I grabbed the oil filter and spun it. had the green tote there underneath it where the oil pan was to catch anything. And the oil filter wasn't super tight. So when it came loose, it spun and continued to spin. And I missed it. It went down and punched a hole through the bottom of my plastic tote. That's why I'm afraid about using plastic for the evaporus because if the bolt comes on down on a block or whatever and it goes through and punctures it's going to be a big big mess that was bad enough having a mess there I think I had some old jeans of Rogers here to because he wore out a bunch of jeans and he said here use them as rags well soaked up all the antifreeze and engine oil there so what a mess I knew I should have quit when I was ahead last night I was like out here I got done with uh, core motor number two got that tore down that's sitting up there against the wall and uh, door I guess uh, same thing wall door um, I thought well I'm dirty excuse me sorry uh, I wanted to get the 80 motor off the start stand and on the hinge stand well I had, the oil, <laughs> had it up in the air took all the bolts out of the oil pan and it didn't do like core motor 2 that pan wouldn't come loose so then that's when I noticed, that's when I found that I poked a hole through the tote because I had to move the tote out of the way to let the motor down. Just stick a screwdriver, hammer a screwdriver in there and pop the pan loose. Because the good thing it didn't come off when it was way up there in the air. I would have had a bigger mess. I would have had five quarts of oil all over the place because the oil pan is still full of oil. Go figure, huh? So anyway, uh... I'm trying to get to it today and uh, kind of been having a little bit of issues uh, myself. Uh, I don't, I can't even see him being around myself today, so I'm not sure what's going on there. Started out the day with good. Uh, got out here. We went looking for my old style battery charger because that car we got to work on out there, the battery is dead. And my new charger, if a battery spanked, it won't charge it sometimes well today for some reason it started charging so with me not being able to find things lately I keep going until I finally find it which that led cleaned up going from there to the door which is okay because I was getting tired of banging my knees and legs and shins and uh, finally found the dang thing behind the fan over there so I don't know how I got there don't remember it sitting there because the last time I seen it I swore it was over where I cleaned so at least I got a little more cleaning done in the shop so um, I'm starting to feel pretty good unfortunately and it was a very strong craving I mean I think that's part of the anger issue and I don't know why because I haven't drank much pop lately but yeah I had my daughter bring me one uh, and I can feel the tension going down so I've kind of been dragging but I'm going to get that on the stand and uh, see if we can get that knocked apart here so I just <laughs> it's one of those days you know, I've been dirty for the last two days tearing down motors and that and uh, we'll see how well we do taking this one apart today. And I already see I gotta get my tap and chase the threads on the harmonic balancer. It's the one hole may not even have threads in it. If that does, if that's the case, I'm gonna have a bitch of a time to get that harmonic balancer off there. So anyway, yeah. and I also made a video before this one that I'm not going to use. So. <laughs> Yeah, it's been one, that's that kind of day, so I guess let me move a few things again. And that's what I'm trying to figure out where I'm going to go. I've 
got my own stuff and I need to actually take my own stuff off the stands and get back on this other stuff so that's why the 80 over needs to get on the stand get knocked down and then off the stand and then I gotta continue cleaning in here so anyway I'm gonna shut up and we're gonna get to work on that so hang on see you guys in a millisecond well you know sometimes the best therapy is just get at it well <laughs> okay this is where we're at with the 80 over motor the crank is 10 on the mains and 20 on the rods and looks like it will polish the pistons that came out of there I thought they were going to be scratched up there is no damage on those pistons I think the rings well with as bad as those heads right there were with the sunk valves and that there's no way in heck that thing was running correctly at all and uh, I gotta pull the harmonic balancer and we're ready to take the time and chain off and then we can pull the crank out but uh, the crank well here I'll show you guys looks really really good well, I'll have to mic it in there, but that crank, when you polish that, you ain't going to see nothing. Like I said, it was tw 10, main, 10 on the mains and 20 on the rods, which, that don't scare me. And looking at the camshaft, that ain't very old. And here's the lifters that came out of there. I can't remember if that's the meaning for Rhodes lifters or what. But cylinder number one was the last piston right there uh, the rings were almost stuck on that that one had a little water in it uh, so I, <laughs> I'll check out those pistons and that and get the crank polished and get that oh and when I took the oil pan out and dumped it there was a lot of metal filings in there so I was thinking okay we got something chewed up I haven't checked the cam bearings yet. That's about the only spot left, but everything spins too good to have a bad cam bearing. But somehow or another, there was a lot of metal filings in the oil. So what I'm thinking the scratches was, was the cast iron breaking off the seats on the heads, getting down in there above the rings. That's what put the... I mean, the scratches I thought, when I looked in with the inspection camera, they looked horrific and now that I can see them I can run my fingernail across them you can't catch them they just surface so they will hone out uh, so yeah I'm glad we didn't run it on the stand but uh, I've got a set of heads right there that I could put yeah I'm trying to see where you guys are Oh, it's off camera. <laughs> anyway, it's got a set of heads over there. Right there. They're all done up. If that cam looks good, as good as it does right now, I kept the lifters in order. Uh, maybe we'll put it back together and see what it sounded like with that cam. I mean, if all I got to do is put some rings and bearings in it. I think I got the rod bearings. I've got plenty of 20 under. I need to get some more tens and that so yeah I'm thinking mm -hmm. uh, but as for where the metal filings come from in the oil unless they dumped in some used oil I mean it doesn't even show signs that it was burning oil so I, I just I don't know I just don't get what was going on one set of rings out of the state was lined up the end gaps was lined up and that was on the even side otherwise all the ring gaps were clocked yet and uh, you know I mean maybe that's what I'll do since we're changing the camshaft in the race motor this year take that camshaft stick it in this motor and just put a spare together in case something happens uh, I mean 
<laughs> He's got a heck of a root cool. Yeah, I mean, maybe I'll, yeah, I got that old Monte Carlo out there thinking about getting crazy and put a roll cage on that and turn it into a farm buggy of some sort. So, who knows? But, uh, yeah, sorry guys, I didn't show you knocking out the pistons. I did that with the core motor too. And, uh, nothing uh, weird in not all the rods were marked with the old polka dot system and uh, they had number seven rod that used to be a number seven and number two and number four and number eight I mean but I went ahead and stamped them with my number so if I put them back in I know which ones go where now so the cylinder bores will match and so yeah I might run those pistons through the old uh, Berryman carb cleaner clean them up and uh, clean up the rods and I know to blow them dry this time so I don't get wrist speckles. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I guess I'm not too worried. I mean, it does not look like there was much time on this motor. Um, if there was long enough time on there to destroy the valve seats, that's which without leaded gas may not take long at all so I'm happy it's kinda of thinking about getting these all cleaned up and that and uh, doing like I did years ago when I got rid of uh, 27 motors A buddy of mine we came he came and helped me for two days we gathered everything where we wanted it and then we uh, backed the trailer up and loaded everything up and took off that day and we had a fun day together and yeah I sold cranks, rods, heads, intakes, blocks I even think I took oil pans and they even bought those my car trailer was covered from front to back nice heavy load going a nice paycheck too so but it'd be nice to have one or two motors sitting around for my buddy's race car just because I, I want to make sure we can get him out front and keep him out front and or if somebody else comes along and says hey you got one yeah here you go so, And granted, this is all pending whether or not uh, these blocks pass the crack chests, which I'm sure they will. I mean, those these two core motors here were uh, still had antifreeze, and I don't think it will. I don't know how long it's been since they ran, but. I know the one they quit driving because the lobes were gone on the cam. This one here, I imagine they quit driving it because the heads were not closing the valves. So, the only one that I got in question, which was that first one we took apart with the evapor rust, and uh, yeah, I'm real happy. And you guys, you know, I'm kicking myself in the butt. I've been trying to find a metal barrel and everything. I'm like, oh man, I got, I wish I knew, I wish I knew, I wish I knew. I had some back in the day, which I don't know where all my other ones went, because I had, there were for a while, the guy was getting them from the ice cream place there up north and bringing them to the cell barn, selling them, and I bought a bunch of them. They're gone. I just found one that's still sealed up. I got to see what's inside that, what, what I put in there, and if it's nothing worth keep and then I'm going to empty that out make sure the barrel hasn't rusted on the bottom or anything and uh, I found my barrel that's got a sealable top that I could put the evapor rust in and dip these blocks so I might have just finally found my solution for that so 
Yeah, that maybe I'll have to get a hold of. See if uh, I get a hold of some of those. And that was a food grade barrel that was sealed because they had caramel, chocolate, and all your toppings in them. So um, as long as it hasn't rusted on the inside or through on the bottom, I think I got my barrel and I'll just set it up in here and fill it about half full of apple rust or whatever it takes to dunk a block and cherry picker it down in and let it soak and then right into the hot tank after so we might be doing that here in the next couple of days but anyhow I guess stay tuned we might be building this 80 over 350 I figured it up I think it comes out to like a 364 so 80 over 364 I don't think there's a limit on how big you can go in the... <laughs> I think... Oh yeah, there is. So technically that is a legal motor, but... Maybe, like I said, I'll take that old Monte Carlo frame out there and turn it into some kind of farmyard dune buggy. What the heck, huh? So... That way I can use my welder torch and tubing notch and all that and have some fun. Oh, and pipe bend, uh, tubing bender, too. Yeah, that's over there. <laughs> I'm like, oh, oh, yeah. Got that buried. So, anyway, I guess, everybody, sorry I didn't take you long on knocking out the pistons, but, uh... <sighs> now we got some cleaning to do. <laughs> what are you laughing about? <laughs> anyway, see you later. Stay blessed, and have a good one.